How y'all doing? <laughs> you, good to be, you glad to be in church this morning? Yeah. Good, good. You look good. Um, so we're fixing to get into the crazy. Well, actually, some of you are already in the crazy time of the year. I know Christmas, holidays are always busy, but, but May is always a busy month if you've got kids in school, right? If you've got prom, you've got the last minute programs where you go hear your little kid that can't sing, you know, do their little thing, right? You just do, go to lunch with them. And you should do that. You should do that. But we're getting into the summer months. How many of y'all got a vacation planned? Let me see your hand. Come on. Some of y'all need a vacation. You don't even know it. Uh, you need to take some time off. You need to pull back. Yeah. Having said that, I did want to let you know, in case you didn't know, that we have Sunday morning on Thursday night. All right. So if you're gone on the weekend and you should get away, you should enjoy. Marty and I are taking 10 weeks of vacation this summer. We're really pumped about that. I'm only teasing. Seriously, if you're going to be gone on the weekend and you should be, I want to encourage you to, to be here on Thursday nights. It is, and I say this, but I really mean it. It is quickly becoming the best night of the week for me. And I love just coming. It's laid back. We love it, man. Just worship goes for like a couple of hours and... Uh, it goes a long time. It doesn't do that. But really want to encourage you to be here Thursday nights. Uh, I think since we've started it, we've never dropped below 200 on a Thursday night. And so uh, we need that. Listen, listen, I know Sundays are crazy. May is really a, an awkward month uh, in a lot of ways. But most Sundays, last weekend would be one of those Sundays. We need seats on Sunday morning. I need you to be at th on Thursday night if you can make it. Deal? Okay, five of you said yes. Let's go again. Deal? Yeah. There we go. All right. Um, so we are in week four of our series. No, we're in week three of our series. Asking for a friend. And uh, Marty did an amazing job speaking last week. And uh, yeah. People were coming up to me after church. Pastor, can she do a series for us? If you were to be gone, if you were to be gone next weekend, it's okay. You take off any Sunday you want as long as Miss Marty's speaking. Well, sorry, you're getting me today, so. Today we're gonna to ask or answer a couple of questions. Does God heal? Does Jesus heal? And is it God's will to heal everyone? Now God heals three ways. Number one, he heals naturally. If God did not heal naturally, the first time you cut your finger, you would bleed to death. Number two, uh, God also heals medically. It is God that gives the medical profession wisdom to heal, so never put down the medical profession. Because all wisdom is from above. All wisdom is from God. Today, we no longer have to worry about polio or tuberculosis because God gave us wisdom to heal our bodies medically. Now, uh, chances are everyone has either had a natural healing or a medical healing. Yeah. How many of you have ever broken a bone? Let me see your hand. You've broken a bone. Yeah. How many of you have ever had stitches? How many of you have had, how many of you have had seven stitches or more? In, I mean, seven Seven different so, sewed ups, sewn ups, okay. I've been sewed up seven times. Yeah, so what? Um, how, many of you, how many of you have ever had minor surgery? Let me see your hand. How many of you have ever had major surgery? How many of you have ever had cosmetic surgery? Let's see your hand. Here's the point. The point is if you've ever broken a bone, if you've ever had surgery, Chances are you've experienced a natural or medical healing. Now, here's the other thing. This is more important. This is what we want to talk about today. God also heals miraculously. Yeah. Maybe you're here and you've experienced a miraculous healing. Let me take you to Mark's Gospel, chapter 1 and verse 40. A man with leprosy came to him and begged him on his knees, If you are willing, you can make me clean. Filled with compassion. Don't, don't let that slip. Filled with compassion, Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing. I love that. I am willing. 
he said, be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him and he was cured. This is a case of miraculous healing. But I want you to notice that Jesus was moved with compassion. This morning we're going to answer four questions. Question number one, why does Jesus heal? Why does Jesus heal? Matthew's Gospel, chapter 14, verse 14. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had, what's the word there? What's the word there? Compassion on them and healed their sick. Why does Jesus heal? One reason. He has compassion and he loves people. That is as clear and as simple as we can make it. Now, this is an important point because some teach that Jesus healed people while he was on the earth because he was trying to prove that he was the Messiah or the Son of God. <clears throat> Jesus wasn't trying to prove anything. He is the Son of God. Amen. He wasn't trying to make a statement. Jesus healed people because he was moved with compassion. Jesus loved people. And Jesus loved people when he was on the earth, and he still loves people today. Jesus healed people when he was on this earth, and he still heals people today. Yeah. Let me drop two things before we get to the second question. You need to understand that Jesus is not a sensationalist. Jesus never healed to draw attention to himself. In fact, on a number of occasions in the Gospels, Jesus would heal someone, and he would say, Now listen, don't tell nobody. What would they do? Go out and tell everybody. Jesus never healed to draw attention to himself. And unfortunately today, many of the gifts have become a show. And there are pastors and people in leadership that are simply trying to draw their attention to themselves rather than to Jesus. And because of that, many people have backed off from the truth because we don't want to be associated with the show. But let me tell you something, Jesus still heals today. Now, that may not be important to you today, right now, but there will come a day when it is. Number two, Jesus is a realist. Jesus dealt with reality. Now, there are some who teach that we should deny that we're sick. That somehow, if you state the truth, you're lacking faith. I knew of a pastor who was diagnosed with cancer. There was a, a, a many months, if not a year or so, um, where he uh, prayed for healing, believed for healing, and he eventually died of cancer. And his church did not know about it until two weeks before he died. His family didn't know about it until a couple of months before he died. And the reason why he didn't want anyone to know because he didn't want them to think that he lacked faith. And so I thought about how many comforting words, how many prayers, how much support he missed out on simply because he wasn't willing to admit reality. What is the reality? The reality is I may be sick. That's the reality. But Jesus is my healer. Come on, can we give the Lord a good hand? He is our healer. Faith is not denying facts, it's stating the truth. It's a big deal for some people, all right? I think you would be surprised, or maybe you wouldn't be, by the people in the body of Christ, and they mean well, God love them. But they, 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 they believe somehow that God plugs some kind of faith meter into a person to decide whether they're healed or not. That's nonsense. So Jesus is a realist. Number two, question number two, does Jesus still heal today? Again, that's important because there are some who believe that Jesus only healed when he walked this earth. But here's a huge problem with that thought, with that doctrine. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8 says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. <laughs> so go back yesterday and then the yesterday before you go way back. He's the same. Yeah. Yesterday. <laughs> today. 
and as we move forward in the future. He does not change. I love that. One of the attributes of Jesus is that he does not change. The theological term for that is immutability. Jesus does not change because he cannot get better. If Jesus healed when he walked this earth, he still heals today. And in fact, Jesus said, these signs will follow them that believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Fast forward a little bit to the book of James. He says, we shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. That was written 70 years after Jesus. Jesus healed because he had compassion. And he still heals today because he has compassion on the sick. Now let's go back, think back to our first passage that we read. The man said, if you're willing, you can make me clean. Isn't it crazy to think that Jesus was willing, but he's not willing anymore? At one point in time, he was willing, but something happened. Something, something happened, and he doesn't heal anymore today. Listen, if you take that approach, you have to apply that to every characteristic of Jesus. You and I do not have the luxury to cherry pick what we agree or disagree on based on our experience. We don't take our theology and fit it into our little box. We take the Word of God, the ultimate authority, and we yield ourselves and submit ourselves to the Word of God. Let's look at, he, at Matthew chapter 4, and verse 23. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogue, preaching the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease among the people. News about him spread all over Syria, and people brought to him all who were ill with various diseases, those suffering severe pain, the demon-possessed, those having seizures, the paralyzed, and he healed them. Luke chapter 4, verse 40. When the sun was setting, the people brought to Jesus all who had various kinds of sickness, and laying his hands on each one, he healed them. He didn't send some to the hospital so they could witness to the nurse. Had a dear sister tell me one time as I was visiting her in the hospital. She said, Pastor Steve, I now know why God sent me to the hospital. Not really. I can't wait to hear this. She said, God sent me to the hospital because I needed a witness to the nurse. Really? I didn't say that, but in my mind I'm thinking, are you the only believer in the hospital that could do that? God had to put you in the hospital? In order to reach that nurse, that's nonsense. You see how blurry it gets sometimes? And I believe that God can make something good out of a bad situation, but God doesn't inflict illness on somebody. Send them to the hospital so he can witness to them. God's bigger than that. Mm. Tough crowd here this morning. <laughs> Let me take it to Luke chapter 6, verse 17. He went down with them and stood on a level place. A large crowd of his disciples was there, and a great number of people from all over Judea, from Jerusalem, from the coast of Tyre and Sidon, had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. Those troubled by evil spirits were cured, and the people all tried to touch him because power was coming from him, watch this, and healing them all. Jesus healed all who came. Now, what do you think for a moment? If you had supernatural power like Jesus had when he walked the earth, and you went down to Texas Children's Hospital, how many of those kids would you heal? Every last one. Question. Are you better than Jesus? Do you have more compassion than Jesus? Well, the answer is, of course not. Here's the issue we've got to nail down. Jesus still heals today, period, end of story. Let's go to the third question. Is it his will to heal? Let's go back, okay? 
original verse, original passage, Mark chapter 1. The man said, if you're willing, you can make me clean. Jesus said, I am willing. What is the root word for willing? Will, right? The man was asking, is it your will to heal? Jesus said, I am willing. Listen, brothers and sisters, is it Jesus' will for you to be healed? Absolutely, yes. Now, stay with me because we're going to get a little, little deeper here. Let's, let's jump off into the deep end of the pool. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slack. And the word there in other translations is slow. Okay? Slack, right? You know a slacker? How many of y'all know a slacker? How many of you are married to a slacker? <laughs> the, the Lord is not slow concerning his promise as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us. Here it is. Here it is. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Stop. God is not willing that any should perish. Question, does God want everyone to be saved? Yeah. 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 God wants everyone to be saved. Is it God's will that everyone be saved? Absolutely. It's God's will that everyone be saved. Is that going to happen? No. Why? Because God gave you and I free will. Do you know what the word will means? It literally means desire. It is God's desire that every person be saved. So why isn't it God's desire that everyone be healed? Listen, I understand we get old. And our bodies decay, we eventually die. But to die prematurely due to disease is not God's will. Now, maybe you've heard someone pray a prayer like this. God, if it's your will... Heal them. How many of you ever heard that? Bro, you don't want that guy praying for you. They don't know the Jesus I know. You ain't praying that over me. God's word clearly says that we can be healed. We are healed. So, why don't we pray, Lord, if it's your will, save them. Because it's foolish. We, why would we pray, God, if it's your will, heal them, which is crazy. Why don't we pray the prayer, God, if it's your will, save them. I'll tell you why. Because the Bible says if we confess with our mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe our heart that God raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. Here's the point. We cannot receive healing apart from faith. Satan would have us question whether God really wants to heal us. Now, is everyone going to be healed? No. Is everyone going to be saved? No. If people are not healed, is it God's fault? No. If people are not saved, is it God's fault? No. Okay, so here's the question everybody's asking. So let's dive into this. Why doesn't God heal everyone? And why is it that some are healed and others are not? You ready for the answer, my answer? I don't know. I don't know. Here's what I do know. I know that 33 years ago, my brother was diagnosed as HIV positive. 33 years ago. This is like whenever Magic Johnson was diagnosed shortly after my brother. If you remember, that was... They, they, you didn't touch someone that was HIV positive because it may be caught with a handshake or a hug. You didn't touch. It was, it was back then, it was modern-day leprosy is what it was. 33 years ago, he was diagnosed with HIV positive. And for the next seven years, my mom and dad and my brother prayed and prayed and prayed. My parents did one 40-day fast and two 21-day fasts. 
They prayed. They believed. Quoted scripture. Bombarded heaven. Confessed in Jesus' name, we will be healed. In fact, there was a prophetic word given. The prophetic word to my brother was, you will receive a supernatural blood transfusion. And that person didn't even know my family. Boom. Elevated faith. Whoa. Yeah. 27 years ago on a Wednesday night, I was standing over my brother. He was moments away from dying. And as I looked at my brother that was skin and bones and knowing that he would die in a few moments, I thought about all the prayers that had been prayed. We believe, we trusted. It was not a matter of faith. Remember, Asking God, why? Because we had made the decision, the commitment. We weren't bargaining with God, but we made it abundantly clear to the Father that God, if you healed him, it would be a miracle because doctors can do nothing about it. God, we will give you the honor, the glory, and the praise. You and you alone are worthy. What an amazing testimony, but yet he's moments away from dying. And as I leaned over my brother and some of you done this, but I leaned over my brother and I said, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay to go. I'm going to take care of mom and dad for you. He was my older brother. He said, it's okay to go. Well, Gail, we're going to be here. Me and my sister Gwen, we'll take care of mom and dad. A few minutes after I said that, a tear streamed down his eye, down his face, and he ah, breathed in, and he took his next breath in eternity. Why did God not heal? I don't know. When Sydney was six years old, she was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, juvenile diabetes. It was earth-shaking for us. We'd always had relatively good health, our family. It's two days after Mother's Day, wasn't it, Marty? One day after Mother's Day, Happy Mother's Day. We got the news, man. It was just readjusting, realigning everything. So we just we started praying. We fasted. We believed. God, you're gonna touch her. You're gonna touch her. You're gonna you're gonna minister. You're gonna heal. You're gonna do what? Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember having a lot of hard conversations with God, going, God, why didn't this happen to me? Six-year-old, I'm, I'm an old man. I mean, I can live with it. I've done some stupid stuff, kind of like payback, right? Last time I checked, which would have been Friday, the day before yesterday, she didn't call us and tell us that she had been healed yet. We're still waiting. Why doesn't God heal everyone? Why does God heal some and not others? I don't know. But there comes a time. Would you please grab the Kleenex because my snot's running down my nose. Sorry online. Just, yeah. So, uh, there, there comes a moment and a time in the life of a believer when, and I call this forced faith where you have no other option but to trust God. And I believe those are, are defining moments for us. But brothers and sisters, can I encourage you this morning that there is one thing that we must do. We must trust God. When we have questions, when we have doubts, when God doesn't make sense. We've got to choose to trust him. God, I don't know why you're not healing. I don't know why you're not changing my marriage, my kids. I don't know why, but I'm choosing to trust you. For me, personally, the greatest statement of faith is actually found in the Old Testament. 
You have three guys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And you remember that the king gave the edict that everyone must bow. The music plays, everyone bows to the image. That moment came and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused to bow. So the king brought them in. He said, fellas, I don't know if you've got the memo or not, but let's walk through this again. Music plays, you bow. You got that? Play, bow, play, bow. Now get out of here. And here's what they said. They said to the king, greatest statement of faith in my opinion. Our God is able to deliver us. But that's not the best part of it. Our God is able to deliver us. But even if he doesn't, here's where we got to be. God, I am going to trust you. But if you choose not to answer the way I expected, if you choose another way, if you choose another route, it's not going to change the fact that my confidence is in you. I will not be shaken. I will stand and trust you because you're good, because you're gracious, because you're merciful. This is huge because we got people in the body of Christ that are going crazy because God doesn't answer the prayers that they expect Him when they expect Him, so they're abandoning and getting out of the faith. I'm trying to pass you this morning. There will come a time where you have no other option. The Apostle Paul, who penned these words... Philippians chapter 3, verse 9. Stay with me, we're not done yet. He said, I want to know Christ in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings, becoming like him unto his death, even death on the cross. Stay with me. Could it be that in our moment of suffering, God makes himself real? Could it be that when you suffer, when you go through difficulty and hardship, that you see a side of God that you would never know had you not walked through that moment? Maybe God's more interested in doing some things in you than through you. Listen, suffering is a part of life. Suffering is a part of the Christian experience. The reality is you and I live in a fallen world. Sickness and disease are a part of the fallen world. But never question whether God is willing to heal. The enemy (laughs) will lie to you. And he'll tell you you're not doing something right. Oh, if you had enough faith, you wouldn't be sick. If you had any faith at all, you could pray for your kids or pray for your own healing and God would heal you. Here's three things that typically happen. Number one, um, the enemy would have us blame God, blame ourselves, tell us we lack faith. (laughs) Are you ready? He'll tell you that he's paying you back. Maybe you know someone, and maybe that someone is you, a parent who has a child with a mental or physical handicap. Maybe you know someone that is diagnosed with a terminal illness. You better watch the enemy, because every last time I checked, every time he talks, a lie comes out. God's paying you back. You know that stuff you did back in the day? You know how stupid you were? Yeah, God's just paying you back. It's karma, karma. Oh, yeah, really? Look at me. God never pays us back for what we've done. Now, listen, there are consequences. Hey, I need you on that one. Uh, how many of y'all know there's consequences, right? All right. So you go out and you charge the credit card $25,000, $30,000. That ain't God's fault, right? Uh, God, why didn't you stop me? <laughs> I tried to. It's called your wife, and she wasn't wasn't listening to it. So you you, you wasn't sensitive to the Holy Spirit. I mean, Marty, his whatever name is, right? So I just lost where I was on that one. But here we go. 
there are consequences to every decision, right? Let me t- y'all mind if I go with just a few minutes longer today? Guys, here's the deal, okay? We're going we're gonna to take a moment to observe the Lord's Supper and take communion in just a moment. You have to understand, and th- our God is a God of judgment. Okay, don't miss that. However, the wrath, the anger, I will call it the fury of an almighty, holy God was placed on Jesus at the cross. Guess what? He doesn't have any left over for you. Everything was placed on Jesus. He was the ultimate sacrifice. Every bit of judgment and wrath was placed on him. Listen, we're not judged. There will be judgment in eternity, but God's not trying to pay you back for something you did. Are you kidding me? He'd spend, we would, some of y'all would, you would still be paying for that one, wouldn't you? The leper, oh, listen, here's what we don't question. We don't question God's ability. The leper didn't say, if you're able, you can make me clean. He did the same thing you and I do. He questioned his willingness. And here's a big deal. This is a big issue right here. There's a lot of people upset and angry at God because we know that he has the ability, but he's not willing. Question number four. Is he willing to heal me? This is actually what the leper was asking. He didn't question his ability. He questioned whether God was willing to heal him. He was asking, are you willing to heal me? That is our question. Are you willing to heal someone who has bad thoughts? Are you willing to heal someone who still struggles with sin? Are you willing to heal someone who's made mistakes? Are you willing to heal someone who has an inconsistent devotion life? Are you Willing to heal someone who doesn't attend church faithfully. Are you willing to heal me? When you look at Jesus' ministry, he did not heal indiv- he did not heal crowds. He healed individuals. The multitudes would come, but he healed them individually. Jesus could have waved his hands and everyone been healed, but he didn't. The problem is we feel less deserving than other people because we see our own faults and failures and mistakes. The same way you get healed is the same way you get saved. By grace, through faith. Grace is for the undeserving. You don't have to be good enough to be healed. Because you ain't never going to be there. (laughs) There's one characteristic that everyone had in common who got healed. Just one. And it wasn't faith. The one characteristic that everyone who got healed in Scripture had, they were sick. Some of y'all are going to get that later on this afternoon. That's it. They were sick. Jesus healed because he loves And he heals because he's willing. Remember in the first passage we just read, it says that Jesus touched him. What that means is Jesus embraced him. Let's use a word that is common to us. Jesus hugged the man. Uh, You got a problem with that? You should because this dude was a leper. You don't touch lepers. Leper approached. He let everybody know, unclean, unclean. Clear the way. The man's here. Don't touch him. Notice what Jesus did. He hugged the man. And he said, I am willing. I want you to know this morning that Jesus loves you. He is willing. And he is able to heal. Worship team is coming out. We want to move into a time of communion together. If you... Walked in this morning and you did not get the communion elements.